If we're still unbeaten after these matches today, then I think there is a very good chance that this will be the final season of this year's non-league to legend. Hello and welcome to Club 6, part 32 and non-league to legend. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have two massive title challenging six pointers really early on in the season as well. We're at home against Tottenham, the team who we robbed the title off last year. And then away against Liverpool, who are having something of a resurgence after a few fairly ropey seasons. I mean, it's been a... It's been a downhill spiral for five years for Liverpool, but they are back up there in the uh, in the mix for a Champions League spot early days this season. Uh, since you were last with me, things have been going okay. We got knocked out at the Carabao Cup, which is a result, and uh, that game against Leicester was a little bit dodgy. Uh, we absolutely dominated it, but they equalised, and it was through Sandu, the guy that we sold him in the summer. That made me sad. But we then beat Hoffenheim in the Champions League and we top our group comfortably after two games. We should be fully on cruise control making it through that Champions League group. We are playing Marseille next. I would expect to beat them as well and have our spot booked in the knockout rounds by the end of October. If we Do we have two more matches in October? No. Well, we can't do that, but... You know, nearly. So, this is the team we're putting out there for the game against Tottenham. We've got Vice in goal, a back four of Martelot, Philippe, Vitali, and Jamie, with Davidson, David, and Henrique in midfield, and Schaefer in behind Dolberg and Pingu. Let's get into the match. This is the big one. If we win this as comfortably as we did the last time we played Tottenham, because remember, just a few days ago at the tail end of last season, was it 7 7 2? I think it was. Um,. No Harry Kane. I always forget, is Harry Kane at Tottenham in this world? Or is that one of my other worlds where he left to go to Manchester United? Either way, he's not in the squad at all for them today. Must drink coffee to beat Tottenham. But yeah, I'd like another seven goal performance. I enjoyed it last time. And I think it it firmly establishes us that last season wasn't a fluke if we beat Tottenham convincingly today. If they come out and beat us, then they just had a bad run at the end of the season. And you could see our title win as a bit of a fluke. But no one wants to see it as a fluke. We're, we're the best team in the country. We're the best team in Europe. Um, and to clarify, because I imagine the comments are full of people who have misread or misunderstood the, the intro to today's episode. Obviously, the, the, the series ends when we win the Champions League. We're not doing any of this expedition of gold stuff this this year because that was a it was a bit of a mess last year. So the bit at the start, I was I meant that if we can if we look good in both of these games today, then I don't see how we don't go on and win the Champions League this year, which would then make this the final season on League to Legend. So it wasn't a threat or anything. Makes sense. Cool. We're one nil up, by the way. Six minutes on the clock. And Pingu, who is having the season of his life. I think he's just turned 27, Pingu. And he's averaging at over an eight so far this season for his rating. Scoring goals for fun. Uh, Pingu is very much the main man now. For the majority of our time at Arsenal, it's been sort of, well, Dolberg's the best one, but Pingu's up and coming. Well, now we've got Pingu is the man. Dolberg is, is slotted into that Dennis Bergkamp role. When Dennis Bergkamp was like in in his early to mid thirties and just kind of playing second fiddle to Thierry Omri, he was still a superstar, still a hero, but he wasn't the main man at Arsenal anymore. And that's kind of what what's happened to Dolberg because Pingu is our Thierry Henry, and it's two 0 as we approach half time, and Tottenham are not looking in it at all. And it's Enrique forward to Pingu Schaefer. There is Dolberg, and that's a big miss from Casper Dolberg. Big chance, big miss. I think 3-0 before half-time, and we're pretty much home and dry. 2-0 with a big miss like that. That's the sort of thing that can switch momentum around. But Pingu is in now, and he's not going to miss. And it is 3-0 just before half-time. And Pingu is just a superstar. What a player. What a goal. What a, what a name. Can I really put another picture of Pingu as a thumbnail today? I feel like I'm doing it a lot, but he's the best player in the league. And he's called Pingu. How do I not go through the Pingu back catalogue on Google Images and just regularly show you the picture of a plasticine penguin? Was he plasticine? It was long enough ago that he must have been stop motion plasticine, mustn't he? If I find out that Pingu was CGI, we riot. I'm not having it at all. I'm so choked up. Oh, that was a bit of a blast, blast from the past for you. A goal goes in and I start choking. It's been a little while since I've done that. It's hay fever season. That's what I'm blaming that on. We did concede a goal, though, which 
it's no longer all over before half time again because it's only that two goal difference and now the the momentum is with Tottenham again. Um got to blame Jamie for that goal as well. I am actively on the lookout for a right back to bring in in January. It's going to be difficult to bring one in in January because for us to bring someone in who's going to be Champions League quality, chances are they've already played in the Champions League and as the Champions League is our main target this year, we're not going to be able to bring in a Champions League quality right back who's not already cup tied in the competition we need him for. So that if there is a reason why we don't win the the Champions League this year, assuming we carry on in good form in all the other competitions, it's it's because we don't have a right back. Pingu is picked picked up a knock. I think we need to be thinking in terms of withdrawing Pingu from the action. But I, just, I want to give him five minutes to see if he can grab a hat trick. Assuming he's properly injured, we'll take him off at the hour mark rather than waiting to my usually seven, usually usual seventy minutes. Right, he's got a bruised ankle, and we've now conceded another goal. We're basically playing with nine men because David and Pingu are both injured, and we're letting Tottenham back into the game. So let's make a double substitution on fifty-five minutes. This is not like me at all, but being able to bring on Pinero and Leshy, two world-class players with oodles of Champions League experience, that's not a bad substitution to be able to make just to try and stop the game from drifting away from us we were absolutely in control just before half time and now it's all slipping away from us and I think hopefully bringing those two on is just our way of reasserting our control because I think we've probably we've certainly improved the midfield less she's better than David Pinero obviously not as good as Pingu because Pingu is a superstar but Pinero has been scoring a few goals for us recently so fingers crossed he can continue in that form today. I instinctively paused the game on 70 minutes to make a substitution and realised I'd already made two, so we better hold off for a little while before making a third. I don't know that we've necessarily got another game changer on our bench. Anyway, Panero's in though, but can't quite get hold of it. Um, um, a few people were questioning Jake Herford yesterday as well. I noticed him down there on the bench and it reminds me the fact that he's five foot eight and only has a jumping of nine. I don't know that I mentioned it yesterday. My plan for Jake Herford, he is going to be a fullback for us. He's training to be a left back, but he's, he can use either foot. We're, we're starting with left back because he's already accomplished at left back. So we'll make him a natural left back, get him playing at left back. And then once he's done that, we'll train him at right back as well. And we'll just have him as a, a fullback who can go on either side. He can use either foot. And he can defend properly and just have him as like our utility defender. He'll just play anywhere across the back four where we need him. Dolberg's just made it 4-2, by the way. I didn't want to get too excited because I didn't want another coughing fit. But 4-2 with 15 minutes to go and it should. That should be it at this point, surely. Leshy to Jamie. Cross comes in towards Schaefer, but you can't quite get there. It falls to Henrique, who finds Jamie again, who's looking for Dolberg. Dolberg's drifting around in little pockets of space. Tottenham are just leaving Kasper Dolberg to roam around the penalty area. And I don't really understand the logic there, but he was he was in again there. Are they just letting him drift offside? It's a really weird way to defend against someone who has probably scored dozens of goals against Tottenham over the years now. He's been at Arsenal... Is it 12 seasons? It's 11 seasons? A long time. Anyway, he had his testimonial last summer, not even the summer just gone. So, yeah, that would make it 11 seasons, wouldn't it? It seems silly that they would just let him roam around doing what he wants. I know he's getting on a bit now, but he's still only... Is he 31, 32? He's not ancient. He's still a goal threat, as he just proved. Right, let's make our third substitution. I think we are going to freshen up the defence a little bit. We'll just bring Alex on for Vitali, And uh, hopefully Alex just will get in there and shout a lot and do a bit of organisation. And there's your example of why Hereford's probably not going to get a lot of games at centre-back for us. But you look at Jamie and Martel up on both sides at full-back and think, yeah, we don't really have backup to either of them. The options, whenever one of them doesn't play, is we move Alex over to right-back or we move... Um, Felipe over to left back. Well, this way we've got Hereford, who should be able to be sort of first reserve for both and maybe even establish himself as our first choice right back because we've not been able to find a right back. Perhaps I should be training him at right back rather than left back. Schaefer's just made it 5 2, and it's not quite the 7 2 drubbing, and we haven't been quite as in control as we were the last time we played Tottenham, but we have convincingly beaten them again. We've scored an absolute ton of goals against them again. And remember, Tottenham are one of the top three clubs in the country and we are just smashing them for the second time in like 10 league games, which is 
absolutely mad. What's also mad is that Sunderland are currently up in the Champions League spot. Sunderland seem to be following me around in all my saves. Um, they're in League One with me in back in the borough. They're in the prem. They're in the Champions League qualification spots with me in non-league to legend. Perhaps Sunderland are just calling out to me. They want me to come and manage them. Um, right, Liverpool next. Easy peasy. Sometimes I think past Kev just messes with me. I didn't realise there was a two-week gap between these two matches. Or more than... A, no, that is a two... Regardless, I've just been sat here for 15 minutes. It can continue. It does mean Pingu's fit again. Unless she's the only change, he comes into the team uh, for Junior David, who um, picked up an injury on international duty. Um, it's only like a twisted ankle or something. He'll, he'll be back soon, don't worry, you'll be fine. It does mean we have another opportunity to have a look at Harley Lawford, who is forcing his way into first team reckoning a little bit more this season. Um, he came through our youth team, he's got four star potential ability, he's 20 years old now, so I am going to try and get him some first team opportunities this year, because you know, there's always the chance that we'll be at Arsenal for another two or three years yet. Yeah? We need to bring through the next generation of Tommy Mersons and Junior Davids. Not that Tommy Merson gets anywhere near the team anymore, which is a shame, but Schaefer is so good, and Merson can only play in that position, and Schaefer can only play in that position, that, I don't know, perhaps I need to start rotating Merson into the team a little bit more again, or maybe it is time to move him on. I mean, he was he was on his way out of Arsenal when I arrived. He was on the transfer list when we got here, and he got a, what, a three, three and a half year stay of execution just because he could play attack in midfield and no one else at the club could. But he's never really been a Champions League quality player, has he? So perhaps he's someone who we maybe do need to move on. Um, Reese Nelson is going to be in this Tottenham in, in this Liverpool team as well. I don't know if he's actually playing, but this is who we sold Nelson to in the summer. So presumably he's hovering around somewhere. Um, he'll no doubt show up and score a goal. I wonder if that's him hovering around near our right back. It could well be. Um, is he on the pitch? He is, that was him. So he's playing left wing for Liverpool today and will probably just score a hat-trick against us. Um, apparently, the Liverpool manager is my bogey manager, according to the media before the match. I've never beaten him, which surprises me because I don't, I don't think I've heard of him. I don't remember where I might have played him before. I wonder if I've just never played him, which is why I've never beaten him. But they certainly seem to be bogeying us at the moment. We are unbeaten going into this game so far this season, but... Liverpool might be the team to rip our and beat and run away from us after... I mean, they are well back into the Champions League uh, mix after, like I said before, five years of being nowhere near, well off the pace. Still obviously have the players knocking around the club to be able to sort themselves out and reorganise into a, into a competitive team. They just had a succession of port managers, I guess. But 2-0 down now. And, oh, blooming heck, if we go 3-0 down, this is disastrous. Vice just about keeps hold of it. And we need to, we need to sort ourselves out over half-time. The stats suggest at 2-0, we perhaps could feel a little bit hard done by. A 1-0 would be a fairer score going into half-time. But they could be about to make it 3. And we don't look like getting back into this game at all at the moment. Cross comes in, and it's Reese Nelson who hits the crossbar. That would have been disgusting. I would have, yeah, just disgusting. There's no other word for it. That would have been horrible. Um, but yeah, we've we've not been in that at all in that first half. Huh. We'll give it 15 minutes before we think about some substitutions and seeing what we can do to change things. I mean, like I say, stats-wise, we're doing all right. We'd, I don't think anything drastic is needed, but we just haven't like they've been prolific we haven't been we haven't really created any good chances to have the opportunity to be prolific or well, there's been a couple of half chances that we've wasted martelot big ball forward towards Schaefer. can he control it he can but not well enough to be able to get across him but it falls to jamie who then can't beat the defender and that's a lumped ball forward to dolberg who scores did he stay on side i think did he did he? He did, and that's his 250th goal for us as well. That's marvellous stuff. Jamie with an assist. I mean, this is not a typical Arsenal goal. Oh, it isn't Jamie, it's Vitaly, who just literally lumps it goalwards, and Dolberg's just underneath it to tuck it and steer it into the back of the net. Um, 250 goals for Arsenal. What's the record? Could he be all-time record goal scorer? I have no idea what the Arsenal record for all-time goals might be, but it would be quite cool to have Kasper Dolberg break that. Um... Right, now we need now we need an equaliser. Are we, I'm, I'm happy to come away from this game with a draw. If we can grab an equaliser, we'll leave it there. We'll be comfortable at that point. Right, 
what are we going to do to change things? Schaefer, this is where we could do having Tommy Merson on the bench, but we'll bring Pinero on um, to go in behind the front two. And Felipe's having a bad game, so we'll bring Alex on, and that will do for now. Pinero's played a couple of times in this attacking midfield pocket when Schaefer's come off. And he does quite well there. So another reason why Tommy Merson's falling down the pecking order. All three of our strikers, all three of them are on the pitch now. Any of them can play as attacking midfielder as well. Plus Schaefer, plus Leshy can play there. Um, can, I don't think Davidson can actually. But we've got plenty of players who can play in that position. So I think Merson we may have seen the last of. Unless Schaefer gets a long-term injury. In which case he'll probably drift back into the team that way. Um, we need a final substitution. Casper Dolberg is shattered. Um, we have got Ben Willis on the bench. He's the one of all our strikers who can't play as an attacking midfielder. We'll stick him up with Pingu, with Pinero coming in behind, and hopefully grab an equaliser. Come along now, gentlemen. We've got one of our homegrown players on, at least in the shape of Willis. Pingu has got space. I mean, both Willis and Pinero were free in the middle there. Pingu tried to go it alone. After all the plaudits Pingu earned in that last game he's been very poor today and that was just wasteful Leshy forward towards Pinero what can he do he has a shot and it's a better shot than I was expecting from that kind of range but again can't help but think trying to play Willis in would have been the better option we've had 21 shots today and it's not been enough I feel a little bit hard done by with that result but there goes any chance of being the invincibles <sighs> Oh, well, well, we'll dust ourselves off. We'll go and beat Marseille and then we'll still go on and win the league this year. Remember, the goal this year is the Champions League, so I won't be devastated if we finish second in the Premier League and win the Champions League. That's a trade-off I'm happy to make. If you have enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.